Hello, this is Dr. Jeffrey Tebert, Assistant Director of National Fellowships with the Center for Undergraduate Scholarly Engagement, or CUSE, at the University of Notre Dame. And for the next little bit, we will be talking about the uh, Boren Scholarship application. Uh, this is not designed as a general information session about the Boren Scholarship. Uh, that's actually available elsewhere on the ND Fellowships YouTube channel. Um, this instead will be focused mainly on going through the application for the scholarship and offering some advice about the uh, key parts of the application. But briefly, just to review what the Boren Scholarship is, it is an award that supports study abroad in non-Western countries. Um, the study abroad can be in the summer only if you are in a STEM field, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Otherwise, you have to be planning to go for um, the fall semester, the spring semester, fall and spring, or summer and fall. And they give priority to people who are planning to study abroad for more than six months. Months. So in the case of most uh, Notre Dame students, that would mean planning to be abroad uh, for the complete academic year, uh, fall and spring, although there might be situations where you could combine a summer and fall um, program. It is possible to receive the Boren Scholarship if you're just planning to study abroad for a semester, um, but then you have to have pretty good reasons for why you could only go for one semester, because the priority of the Boren Scholarship is to support linguistic and cultural Im immersion, and they think it's easier to do that if you're um, away for a longer period of time. So that's one element to it. The other key element, and this will be relevant in terms of the application, is that um, they <coughs> want to support people who plan to have careers uh, in the federal government. You're obligated to work in the government for at least one year um, after graduation. It can be deferred for graduate school or certain other opportunities, but their ideal is someone who really plans to have a career in the federal government, especially a career that is somehow relevant to U.S. national security. Um, and that's probably the most important point to make is um, that they are very interested in a US national security. The award is funded by a national security act and they do define national security broadly so it doesn't just mean military security but basically anything that would make the US more secure um, in some way. So you know sustainability efforts actually in other countries can count toward uh, national security. Um, anything that makes another region of the world more stable, um, more open to democracy for instance, anything like that can kind of fall under this heading of national um, security. And we'll see in a bit when we go over some uh, sample applications, we'll see how some different people have addressed this point. But um, Really, the key to receiving a Boren scholarship is to keep that aim of national security in mind um, throughout. If you are not interested in that at all, if you have no interest in a career in the federal government, um, it's very difficult to receive a Boren scholarship. Uh, but if you do have an interest in those things, then it's definitely worth applying if you are planning to uh, study abroad. So. That's all I will say about the award generally, um, except to also note that they have an African Languages Initiative, they call it, and through that program, um, they do have some special opportunities, and so if you have an interest in African languages, and that just means languages spoken in Africa, um, they're mostly... Uh, local languages, but in, uh, Portuguese is actually one of the languages too. So um, 
it might be worth going to the Born Scholarship website and looking up the African Languages Initiative because uh, like I said there are special programs that um, they run through that and the African Languages money comes from a separate pool and so you actually have a greater chance uh, on average of receiving the award if you're applying in that category. Now, the heart of the Boren scholarship application um, is uh, two essays that you have to write. Um, they would call them both uh, statements of purpose. There's statement of purpose part one and part two. Um, you have to provide other information about your study abroad program, about your educational history, things like that, but um, it largely comes down to these two essays in addition to the two to three letters of recommendation you have to um, obtain. So what I would like to do is go over um, two examples of uh, statements of purpose for the board and scholarship and we'll kind of use those to get a sense of what they're looking for in these essays and I hope that that will help as you're sort of formulating um, your own essays here. So we will start, I'll bring the essay up on the screen so you can follow along. We will start with um, <clears throat> just one moment. We will start with an application that was made um, to India, to study abroad in India. Um, and the language of interest here was um, Urdu. And it's important, uh, you know, linguistic immersion is part of this born scholarship too, so it's important that you make a case for not only um, why a region you're interested in is relevant to national security, but also a language. So let's look at the statement of purpose here. You'll see part one. I mean, this is by far the most important essay in the application. They want you to, this is your rationale for um, going abroad. They want you to explain the significance of the proposed study abroad experience, including the region, culture, and language to U.S. national security broadly defined. Then, they want you to describe how the country, language, and study abroad program you selected will help you achieve your academic and career goals, including your plans to fulfill the service requirement. Now, you get 6,000 characters uh, to do this, and <clears throat> that amounts to about a thousand words. Um, it could even be more than a thousand words depending on how long your words are, but it's in the ballpark of a thousand words. Um, so there's two basic things they want you to do here. One, talk about how the region, the culture, and the language are relevant to U.S. national security. Now, that in a way is more of a research essay and you'll see this as we go through the samples. There they're looking for an understanding that you have that the place you're planning to go, the culture, the language, uh, all are relevant to U.S. national security. That basically your plan fits in with the aims of the Boren Scholarship. The other side here, the other thing you have to do is describe how the country, the language, the program will help you achieve your goals. So there's two pieces to this. So now, in this essay, um, <clears throat> note that essentially what he does here in the first paragraph is lay out a kind of summary of the point he's got to make throughout this essay. So he starts off by focusing on national security, it requires stability, <clears throat> probability of instability, highest in South Asia. This is why he wants to go to India, study Urdu, which is relevant to, to uh, Pakistan. And then he says, by granting me a solid foundation in Urdu and South Asian culture, the Boren Scholarship would help me develop the language skills and cultural literacy necessary to assist in our efforts to, to diffuse disputes, strengthen vital institutions, and foster prosperity in the region. So what we're getting here um, is a kind of brief answer to each of the two main things they want to get at here. 
here's why South Asia is important for national security, and here's how this experience is going to help me contribute to that. And nobody's not specific here about how he plans to contribute to that. That will come later, but he's laying that out here. And this is a good strategy for this first paragraph. In a way, give a one-paragraph answer, and I would say even a few-sentence answer to the essay prompt. Summarize what you're going to say in the essay right up here in the beginning so that they know right up front that you um, you know, essentially have a thesis here, that you have uh, strong answers to both of the questions that they're looking at here. Then he moves on here, and you'll see that um, at least um, almost the entire rest of the essay, starting here with South Asia, focuses on that first part of the prompt, how the region, the language, the culture are relevant to U.S. national security. And what's interesting here is that, and you'll see as we go through this, and I'll, you can pause this at any point, of course, to um, look at some of these in more detail. But you'll see that um, there's virtually nothing about the applicant in this part of the essay. It is essentially a essay about why South Asia is relevant to US national security. And so again, what they're getting at here is that you know something about the region, that you understand um, the region, that you understand its relevance to security. You can think of it as, um, suppose in a class you were given an essay question to answer on an exam that said, how is a certain region, uh, language and culture, relevant to U.S. national security. How would you answer that exam question? You'll note that you don't need citations necessarily, um, although you could potentially refer to sources, but they just want to see here that you, you know, you've know you kind of done your homework here, that you really have a full understanding of the region's relevance to U.S. national security. And for most people, this is going to require, this is going to be the hardest part of the application because it may require some research. Um, it's going to require probably a number of revisions to make a kind of tight argument for why um, the area is relevant to U.S. national security. Um, and there's no formula for how you do this, but what you will see is that he talks about South Asia sort of generally. He moves into talking about Pakistan. I'm going to move to the next page here so you can see this. Um, and he does move into talking about Urdu more toward the bottom of this uh, page here, as you can see. So I would encourage you to pause it here if you'd like to read this over, but the biggest point I can make here is that this is essentially a research paper without citations. Um, it's This has really nothing in particular to do with this person's plans. It's all about the relevance of the region to national security. Um, now, again, feel free to pause it if you need to. You'll note that only here at the end, only in the last three paragraphs, does he start to talk about himself again. Here we get into why the board scholarship is useful. It will help prepare him, he says, to study South Asia in graduate school and prepare him for a career. Um, and he gives specific reasons here for why his study abroad plan will help him prepare for this particular career. So he says, for instance, um, the State Department is looking for certain kinds of things. They desire culturally adaptable candidates. A year in India would help him develop this cultural adaptability. He connects what he's planning to do directly to things that the government is looking for that kind of fall along his uh, proposed career path here. Um, so that part of the essay should be a little more straightforward because it's essentially just talking about what you plan to do and why you think uh, this particular experience would help you achieve that. Um, but as I said, this is a smaller part of the essay. For most people, a good two-thirds to three-quarters of the essay will be taken up with this discussion of how the region is relevant to national security. You're basically convincing them 
that the place you're planning to go to, the culture you're planning to be immersed in, the language you're planning to study is important to U.S. security interests. You're trying to convince them of this. Now, granted, a lot of their viewers are already going to know this, but pretend like they don't. Pretend like you were trying to convince someone of this. Why is it really important um, to have people go there? Because you're essentially convincing them that sending you to this place will benefit national security. And so part of that is making the case that the region is relevant to national security. The other part is convincing them that your career is going to contribute to national security in some way. So this is the first essay. Um, and I would say it is the, um, this is the hardest part of the application, this essay right here, hands down. This is where you will spend most of your time. Um, I think this essay is key to receiving the scholarship. It makes all the difference. Um, now, part two of the statement of purpose is the study abroad program description. And you can read the prompt here. Again, 6,000 characters. You don't have to use all 6,000 um, in either essay, but you've got them if you need them. Here, note that it just says describe, describe describe. All they want you to do is describe the program, describe the language component, and describe the lang uh, how you've studied the language in the past and how you're going to keep doing it in the future. You do not here need to talk about national security. All they want to do is hear about the program and your language study. So this is purely descriptive. What they're doing here is largely making sure that you know what you're getting into, that you've really chosen this program wisely, because they want to see that this program is really worthwhile, that it's really going to give you the kind of training you said you were going to get in the first essay. Now, one thing to point out here is that it does say both the preferred and alternate program. For the Boron application, you do have a chance to propose an alternate program. It is usually recommended that you do that, if possible, um, because if you receive the Boron scholarship, but your preferred program falls through, and you haven't indicated an alternate, you can't receive the award. So if you do propose an alternate program, what they typically recommend is um, talking, maybe spending two thirds of the essay talking about the preferred program and one third talking about the alternate program. You don't have to go into as much detail about the alternate, but you should still explain it enough to make it clear why you've chosen it. So, um, again, this person has chosen a program in Hyderabad in, in, in India, and essentially what he does um, is. We have a first paragraph that sort of summarizes the program. And then, just detail. Here's what the program involves. Here's what the classes are like. There are cultural excursions. Here's what these are like. Um, he talks about the language component in detail. They want to know how often you'll be studying the language, how long the studies will take. Um, again, give them as much detail as you can about this. Um, and then they want to hear about your language study. You'll note that he does not use all 6,000 characters here. And in fact, he did not even propose an alternate program. He, this was the only one that was of interest to him. But again, you know, the only place where he really comes into it here are at the end when he talks about his study of language and how he plans to continue or do when he returns. Um, so again, purely descriptive. This is all they want to see here. Um, this person, as I have said, received the Boren Scholarship based on this application here. And if he, of course, had letters that supported what he was saying, ideally you want letters here that um, attest to your academic ability, but also attest to your potential for having the kind of career you propose to have. So, you know, it would be helpful to have letters 
that essentially confirm that you'll be able to do the kinds of things you say you're going to do, that you have um, you know, the potential to succeed in graduate school if you're proposing to do that, potential to succeed on certain career paths. Um, they essentially want these letters to kind of confirm what you're saying about yourself in the application. So again, feel free to pause uh, the video here um, if you want to read through these essays um, in more detail. Now, I'm going to remove this essay from the screen and we'll look at another one uh, briefly here. Okay. So this essay was to uh, do study in Ecuador, and Spanish was the language. And uh, Spanish and French can be proposed as languages if they're non-Western countries. Um, and uh, you just have to, in, in, that, in, in that situation, make the case that this experience would move you from very advanced proficiency to fluency. And one way to judge that is they want to see that you are taking classes or doing a study um, in the language, that you could actually be taking classes in Spanish or French. That's the level that they would need you to be at here. Um, if you're not at that level, then um, you really couldn't apply for the Boren Scholarship to do Spanish or French. So this person, Ecuador, Spanish, um, note the first essay here. Again, how does it start? Um, it just gets right in to talking about why the region, and Ecuador in particular, are relevant to national security. The focus, his particular focus here is on um, the drug trade. Um, and then he, at the end he talks about how um, he will be able to boost U.S. national security through infrastructure development um, by doing these things he'll be able to do in the program. So again, longer first paragraph here, but what it's doing is essentially laying out um, his case in a paragraph. Then we get into more detail. So his focus here is really on the drug trade. Um, that's, you know, because that's the national security interest that stands out to him the most. But again, you'll note, looking through these initial paragraphs, um, there's not a lot about him. Um, we can kind of move through the rest of it here, and again, I will say that you can pause it if you'd like, but um, You'll note that he doesn't come into it too much until the end again. Um, here he's ma basically making a case for, um, you know, what, why drug trade, why the drug trade in the region impacts national security. Um, he talks about how his own interests would help to mitigate the drug trade. Um, then he does move into. Uh, talking about some other reasons why the, in, the region is of interest, the country is of interest, aside from the drug trade. He gets into diplomatic reasons. Um, so, you know, again, really up until these last couple paragraphs here, which I've got on the screen now, really up until these last couple paragraphs, it's basically a research paper responding to the prompt of why this region um, country, language, culture are relevant to U.S. national security. And then at the end, we start to hear about how what he's planning to do will allow him to address the issues in his career that he has raised earlier in the essay. And essentially, he plans to do engineering work um, that will allow him to contribute to infrastructure development in the region, which he says does help to contributes to national security because increased uh, infrastructure development helps to mitigate uh, the drug trade uh, in Ecuador and in the region at large. So again, there isn't a formula for how you go about this because what you do is going to depend a lot on the region you're talking about, on the country you're planning to go to. Um, but if there is a formula, it's that probably two-thirds of the essay should be about the region, country, language, cultures, relevance to national security. The other third should be about how you and 
your ex your proposed experience will contribute to national security. If there's a formula, that's it. And I will say that is crucial. If you do not have a good argument for why the region is of interest to national security, make sure that you do some research into that before you apply because this will make or break you. If you don't have good reasons here, if it's clear that um, you're not truly interested in national security, that you haven't thought about this, they will see right through you. Um, this is competitive enough where um, if you don't have good reasons in this essay, you will not receive the award. Whereas if you do have good reasons here, your chances go way up. So I do encourage you um, to really think about uh, the region's relevance to national security. And I will say um, the people who did these essays, they worked on them for months before um, the deadline. They received a lot of feedback. These, uh, this essay in particular took a long time. So, um, you know, this is not the kind of essay you'd probably dash out um, in a weekend, for instance, unless you were already very knowledgeable about these things. Um, but you may need to look some things up. You may need to do some research. Um, you know, you might want to, if you don't know already, you know, keep, a tra keep track of what is being said about this region, this country, in the news. What parts of it are relevant to national security? Um, again, your goal here is to convince the reviewers that you understand uh, why the region is relevant and that you're going to make a contribution. Now again, part two, purely descriptive. Um, here he's just talking about what he plans to do. Um, he gets into a little bit of why he wants to do this, which is fine, um, but it's not really strictly necessary here. Um, Again, this can be just purely descriptive. Um, now, he did not—he was not doing a program. He was planning to essentially enroll as a uh, foreign student at this university in Ecuador, and so he is essentially talking about what he. A big part of what he's trying to do here is um, convince the reviewers that he knows what he's doing because this isn't a formal program. So he has to put a little bit more effort into kind of justifying how he has set up something reasonable here, something that's going to be beneficial. And that's why he talks about having worked with a PhD student who uh, went there. Um, he gives a lot of details about what he plans to do both through the formal education and also just while living there. I'll pause it here. Um, he also, of course, then goes into more about his experience with Spanish um, and even indigenous languages and the importance of this for people working in the region and um, why he must study Spanish there, um, which is especially important when it's so easy to study Spanish in the U.S. Why is it so important to go there? And at the end, he does talk more about how he plans to continue Spanish upon his return. So again, feel free to pause this, look at this. I'll leave it up on the screen for another minute. But, you know, what is, what I, I mean, I've emphasized this plenty of times, but I hope that in just going through these essays, you get a sense of what they are looking for here. Um, you know, where I see these applications fail, uh, most often or run into difficulties most often is people do not answer the questions <laughs> and they they read the prompts but then kind of write whatever they want and um, you know this is a fairly serious application uh, they really want some rigor in your answers here they only want to support people who have really Really thought this through. Um, so this is a situation where you know you're interested in studying abroad in a non-Western country and you're looking for funding. And so, oh well, I'll try to tie it into national security. And yeah, I wouldn't mind working for the government. That's going to be a tough ap application. Um, often, people in that si situation um, have a hard time uh, with with this. Uh, Typically, the people who are most competitive are people who really already have an interest in working in some capacity for the federal government, um, whether it's in development, 
diplomacy, um, some other area. It can be any kind of federal government service. It could be uh, even the Peace Corps. It could be um, like a, it could be an intelligence. It could be in the military. It doesn't really matter what exactly, but the people who are most competitive genuinely want to do that, and their interests genuinely do connect to national security somehow already and they know something about the region they want to go to already. They've studied it in some way. They've, in some cases, perhaps they've been there before, though not always. Um, both of these examples, and I'll switch this off here, both of these examples I've shown you here, these are people who really, they knew something about the region already. They had taken classes, um, you know, they had done their own independent study, um, so, you know, I just want to emphasize the seriousness of this. Like I said, the best you'll have the best chance if your interests really do align with what the Boren Scholarship is looking for. Um, and even then, there's no guarantee, but the better of a case you can make that your interests and that your region line up with national security um, and a career in the federal government, uh, the better chance you'll have of receiving this award. So. As you're applying, um, if you would like advice or feedback on the application, feel free to contact us uh, in Q's Fellowships. You can email us at fellows, that's plural, at nd.edu. I'll be able to see that email. I'm happy to set up a time to go over it with you in person. You can e email me your essays for feedback. Um, there is a campus deadline for the Boren Scholarship. Uh, typically in late November, and then there will be usually campus interviews so that a campus evaluation can be produced. Um, people are not nominated, anybody who wants to apply can, but the campus does have to provide an, an evaluation that becomes part of your application. Um, that's beneficial actually to you because it can contribute to your application positively, but it also gives you a chance to get feedback on your application from a committee of people who are taking the time to read it and think about it. So um, you will have those interviews in uh, typically early December and then the deadline for the Boren is usually at the end of January or the beginning of February and so you would have some time after the interviews to make revisions to your application based on the feedback uh, before the final deadline and um, that is usually helpful to people going through the process. So feel free to get in touch with me if you have questions. Again, uh, my email is fellows, that's plural, at nd.edu. I'm happy to help in any way I can, and um, I look forward to working with you. Thank you for your time, and I hope this has been useful.